You can either have your consciousness being consumed by thinking, or you can have your consciousness in here, in the body. So most people's lives are consumed by their mind. It burns up their life energy uselessly. You lie in bed, you worry, you travel to work, you worry, you think, should, shouldn't have, what if, and so on, all going around in circles. If you could exit f even for a few minutes and find stillness, because that is the entry point into inner stillness, when you leave identification with a conditioned mind. Now the conditioned mind will tell you, don't go there, because you won't know what's going on anymore. You will lose your mind. Not true. It is only if you are connected with that that you can use your mind in a fresh, creative and constructive way. So, if you can sit here and feel, yes, you I am alive. Feel it as an in the background, so to speak, and at the same time, you can listen. There is an aliveness here. You're getting closer to who you are than you ever are when you're identified with the story of me. You are stepping out of the story to deriving your sense of self from telling yourself dwelling mentally, continuously, on your life situation, which exists in time, not in the now. I'm not denying the existence of time on its own level or the existence of your life situation, but there is something more powerful that people haven't discovered yet. It's the only place where the new, where true power can come into your life. You have to access this tiny thing that to the mind doesn't even exist now. And the inner body is a powerful anchor for accessing now. You then realize you can sit here without needing to interpret this moment in any way. It is as it is, because otherwise interpretation of what happens to you throughout life is compulsive when you're identified with a compulsive thinking mind. Any situation you go into, you will immediately label it out of your past experience. Any person you meet, you will immediately label according to your past conditioning. So you go through life carrying a screen of conceptualization, which is your thought processes and emotions associated with your thought processes. Wherever you go, you judge immediately, compulsively. That's how it is. That's immediately you say, this is, this, this is how it is. That's Some t people do it more than others. So you are surrounded by that screen, inhabiting a conceptualized reality, which is all conditioned by the past. And then you put labels, mental labels, which are, part, which are concepts, onto other people. You, you formulate concepts about who they are. You take a tiny segment out of their behavior, which is another form of conditioning, which comes out of them, and then say, this is who he is, this is who she is. That's what it does. Or you do it to a group of people. That's, you conceptualize a group of people, call them this or that. Immediately, you cannot sense their aliveness anymore. You cannot sense that here is a feeling, alive, divine, ultimately human being. You cannot sense that anymore. All you can see is your concept of that human being or that group of people. This is how a person can commit acts of great violence against 
a group of people that they have conceptualized in the head, made already lifeless, so to speak, and then these are not humans anymore. You, you can put a bomb there. You're killing, you've killed them already in your mind. You've conceptualized them already. That's how you can see how what on a personal level is simply a screen that makes your life heavy and difficult, that imposes stories on everything that happens to you, on a collective level is, lies also at the root of the dysfunction, the collective dysfunction in humanity. What are we doing to ourselves and to others? So where the root then is to be identified with the conditioned thinking. The solution is to step out of conditioned thinking. And the mind says, oh, you can't possibly do that. Who is talking? Conditioned thinking. Feeling the body? No, you can't. I can't feel the body right now because I've got too much on my mind. Who is talking? The mind. So the mind will tell you also when you wake in, lie awake in bed, you need to think about this now. If you don't think about this now, it will all collapse. It's four o'clock in the morning. There's nothing you can do. You are tortured by your own mind. The body believes that every thought that you have is a reality. The, every fearful thought that you have, that you're actually in some fearful situation. So the body is continuously contracted. And it's, oh no, dreadful things are happening right now. Your energy field gets disrupted. Energy doesn't flow freely anymore. And then do that for a few years. What that does to your body. Oh, this goes wrong here, that goes wrong there. Nothing is flowing anymore. So there you are in bed. Something in the head is telling thee that you need to think about this now. No, I don't. There's no action I can take at this moment. I've thought about it already for 20 hours. <laughs> and it is my choice at this moment not to think. It is my choice to feel the aliveness that I am. And then the mind says, no, you can't do that now. <laughs> Can you identify the thinker and not confuse the thinker with who you are? If you are not the thinker, who are you? Or rather, the thinker asks, well, if I'm not the thinker, who am I? <laughs> when you realize that there's a stream of thinking going through your head, you take one step back internally from the thinking. And when you're in the body, that's easier, of course. You take one step back, and there are the thoughts. And you can choose at that moment that you do not want to think. What for? Many situations in life would be far more beautiful if you were not imposing interpretations on them, especially relationships. We may come to that. But at the moment we are in bed at four o'clock in the morning. So the mind will usually tell you, sometimes it says, I have no time to go into the body. No time. I have too much to think about. It's a lie. But you have to see it as a lie. It is. You have to recognize it is a conditioned mind pattern. The mind doesn't want you to go into the body. And then you go into the body. You've stepped out. You realize more, once you're in the body, you realize a dimension of yourself that is not the stream of thinking, an aliveness. I am that aliveness. That is a thought, but I'm translating into the thought what is ultimately when you sense it, it's not a thought. You feel alive. 
before you did not feel alive. Humans that go through the world with a con that conceptualized reality are not truly, they do not truly feel alive. They need a substitute life. They need continuous stimulus to give them a feeling of that they're still a little bit alive. They need drama in relationships just to have that excitement to feel, yes, I'm still alive, we're, we're fighting. <laughs> the relationship must still be real. Children at an early age, children, very young children, are connected with the aliveness that they are until concepts come into the head. And in this modern civilization, they very quickly get out of their body and the moment especially they start using the mass-produced screen, electronic screen gadgets, they are totally in the world of concepts and stimulus, mental stimulus, and become addicted to that for, to feel alive. They can't feel the life that they are anymore. They cannot live without stimulus anymore. It's a mad world. The most beautiful thing in life, the delight of life, the delight of being, that plants can feel, although we cannot get into plants in that way. With animals we can see it a little bit more when you watch a bird that sings, that flies from one branch to another, when you watch an eagle in flight for an hour without moving the wings. Any animal, a cat purring, they're delighting in being alive. And I'm sure this flower delights in being alive in its own way, not quite, not the same consciousness as the human, basically yes, the same ex one consciousness but a different expression of that, but somehow everything natural is still connected with the delight of being. It is rooted in being. Humans, of course, are also rooted in being, but they don't know it anymore. That's why in the Power of Now it says at the beginning, the beggar is sitting on a box of gold, but has never looked inside. Has always been begging for just a coin, little coins here and there. And this is what humans, human existence has come to. They have lost the delight of life. And we are returning to that. The beauty is, when you're returning to something, you go to a deeper level than when you lost it. And it is not just the delight of life. There is peace in there. There is also, you t are touching the source of all creativity, intuition, realization. True intelligence is there when you step out of the conditioned stream of thinking without losing consciousness. Because that is another way that some humans attempt to do. They realize obscurely that they cannot live with this dreadful torture in their head anymore. So they go to drinks. One drink, feel a little bit better. Another drink, much better. <laughs> Why are they feeling better? The mind slows down a bit. They're stepping out. They're coming a little bit free of the, of the mental torture. And the third drink, then you feel really great. And you start feeling more alive. And then another one. And another. And another. And you're going towards unconsciousness or sleep. So it gives you a temporary reprieve, a temporary aliveness, because you're get, getting out of mind, but you are going towards unconsciousness. You are sinking below the level of thought.
At first it's beautiful because even that is better than the torture of my of the mind. 